Around 1999, I remember um, the first uh, Nokia 7110 WAP phone went on sale. So it was like a monochrome black and white phone, but it had internet. But you have to dial up and wait for it to connect over a minute before it would connect. And then it had this like sort of internet called WAP. Um, but I was like really intrigued by this idea that if you had this little thing in your pocket that was battery powered with no wires, but it could talk to the internet, and the internet's got servers, and servers are very powerful. This idea, it basically meant you had a supercomputer in your pocket. And so I was sort of inspired by the idea of this. And I went ahead and I sort of created some apps and services, like mapping applications and email. Um, and I put a name on it called Streetwise, and I got some, some sort of publicity for that. And from there, I created a, a, a startup company um, called Voxpilot out of, out of uh, UCD with a couple of other people. Uh, I was the CTO, um, uh, and we created speech recognition services for mobile. And so we sort of—I've always been sort of in that field. And then in 2007, I started talking to Google, and they—they they wanted to create a team, uh, a focus really in London, to work on mobile because mobile was—you know—hadn't taken off still. Even though I had sort of made that phone in '99, it was still kind of like these phones that didn't really do much. Uh, mo you know, majority, vast majority of search traffic was all desktop, almost nothing for mobile. Uh, but I, I could still see that this was going to change once you had bigger phones and better phones. And so I started in mobile in, in London, basically, and then four years later moved to the US. And so in 2007, life was brutal. So we had to, we had to make it work on like these J2ME phones. J2ME is like a micro version of Java that behaved completely different on one phone versus the next phone versus the next phone because it was badly defined. Um, or you would have like a Nokia Series 60, which is another type of operating system out of a company called Palm originally in the UK. Or you'd have Windows Mobile, which was sort of like a stripped down desktop OS, but didn't quite work the way you'd want it to work. Um, and it was very, very difficult to create these services. And it was very hard to scale them. For my team in London, you know, we were building services for lots of different types of phones. But, in, you know, and then, and then the first Android device launched in 2008, uh, the T-Mobile G1. And we started, uh, inc you know, increasingly we started writing applications not just for existing phones, but also for these Android devices. And then as Android started to take off, and, and it was kind of slow for the first year, but then after that, you know, with the Verizon Droid, it really started to accelerate. It, it was more and more of my team was spending more and more of its time on Android because we could do more. It's like, hey, we can make speech recognition work on Android and make it seamlessly integrated. And so it just became like, in terms of innovating, you could just do so much more on Android. And we just started pivoting, doing more and more to Android. Eventually one day, still early on, I'm like, I'm just doing Android. This is, let's just do Android. <laughs> And if you look at things like we're doing in Android Wear, which is like um, you know wearable Android for wearables, like watches, for example, um, you know it's all about contextual computing. Like these devices have lots of sensors, and they can they can hear audio, and they can sense light, and they can sense air pressure, and they can sense movement in lots of ways. They know what the Earth's magnetic field is. They know how they're moving through electromagnetic uh, uh, space, and so they they. Um, uh, they they beca can become very aware of their environment, and if you combine them with contextual computing, they can assist you and tell you things. Like, for example, um, you know, my watch can tell me that, uh, and it did. It told me um, uh, that it, it was going to take 20 minutes to get to UCD today because the weather's bad. Like, it know it knew where it was going to go because it was in a calendar invite, and it knew the traffic, and it knew uh, how long it normally takes, and it can put all this together. And it's just kind of incredible. And I think that's sort of the future. I think that's where Google really sort of excels in a lot of ways. Is in that sort of large-scale machine learning. Um, so I think I think you're right to bring it up. I think I think it's uh, I think that's a very very bright future. We can do a lot more. We actually Android Auto, Android Wear, Android TV. There, I'm really excited when you have like an operating system, a capable operating system on on all ends. You can start interact creating these uh, experiences that link them all together. Like for example, say you're in your car and it has Android, and you're listening to some music, and then you get out of your car and you walk into your house. Your TV should be able to come on and continue the, the track of music where you left off. Uh, Android Auto is pretty amazing. The, the basic idea is you take your phone, you, you plug it into your car, and we go into what we call projected mode. And so projected mode is, is basically the phone, the screen is actually off, but it's actually projecting apps onto your phone. But these apps are designed for cars, so big buttons, very simple, but very powerful. Um, and so, and it's really important because if you think about cars, most people keep cars for an average 11 years. And so that not only is the software uh, uh, not very capable typically and not very nice, it's also on average going to be five and a half years old, right, on average. Uh, and so, uh, but projection mode, you're, you're updating your phone every year or two years, whatever it is, and it allows us to continually improve the software. So I saw there was a Wall Street Journal quote who said that using Google Maps in, on Android Auto is like going from, compared to the original car, it was going from like a Motel 6 to a Four Seasons. You know, it's that kind of upgraded experience.
Um, and then, of course, cars are super interesting because you know there's a lot of in interesting data inside a car that that can you know enhance the experience or or data that the phone's detecting, right? Because like, it's got a pretty advanced, uh, typically nine axis IMU and and whatnot. Um, so it's early days, but the 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 adoption for Android Auto is super high. Actually.